So a question for you, should you buy, keep, or sell your DJI Inspire 2 drone in 2023? Let's roll. I've wanted to make this video for a very, very long time. Now, the DJI Inspire 2 drone is nothing new. It's been around for a very long time. In fact, so long that we go back to 2016 for its release date. Yes, that's right. This drone is almost eight years old and has been the staple workhorse for film sets, for TV series, for promotional ads, for many content creators' channels, this bad boy has gotten the job done. It was released orig originally with the X4 mount, then there was the X5S mount, the Micro Four Thirds version, and then ultimately the X7 mount, which is the Super 35 mount. There is no limit to what this drone can really do, but it has a lot of quirks when it comes to both the design of it, the interface, the operating system, also the remote reception when you're flying this drone and a whole host of other things that make this drone eh, it's dicey but yet it's appealing and this is why this conversation I think is so important in 2023 because the price of these are falling now with the release of the DJI Inspire 3 many people have begun to unload their DJI Inspire 2s on eBay and on Facebook marketplace and Kijiji or whatever online sales platforms there are People are looking to get value for them, and if you find a good price, you can sometimes find these going for as low as $3,500 I saw recently. That also, friends, comes with an X7 mount. That's a Super 35 sensor flying in the sky. So what is the drawback? Why are people unloading these? Let's break down the pros and the cons of the DJI Inspire 2. So let's talk about the pros. Now, this drone boosts an amazing performance. You can get Cinema DNG, like I said, you can get ProRes RAW, you can get ProRes 422, you can get ProRes 422 HQ and LT, many different shooting modes. It can shoot up to 6K. So the gimbal is articulating and it has a 360 degree option of being able to spin it around upwards and downwards. It can capture unique areas of footage that you couldn't capture on other drone series. And this also allows you to be able to use a second controller. So this is what makes this drone special as well as unique and ultimately professional and what's required on a set. So this drone is rugged. It's big, it's durable, it can manage itself in the sky, it can handle winds because it's just big. The build quality is fantastic. The parts are mostly metal or you know carbon fiber. It's not flimsy and cheap. So two media formats, both micro SD as well as the dedicated SSD drives if you're looking to write Cinema DNG or write ProRes. You also have the ability of being able to swap out two batteries. I have eight of these things. When it comes to these mounts, you can also swap out lenses. Now, yes, that does add cost, but it adds functionality because you can change the focal point of your lenses. You can pop on a 12 millimeter or a 25 millimeter or a 48 millimeter. Now, I've seen people also adapt crazy mounts to things like you can pop on anamorphic glass onto this. You can add weights to it to adapt even heavier lenses. There's a lot of things you can do to jailbreak this drone, which I don't recommend, but if you do, you know, just Bear in mind, you might mess up the gimbal, but you might be able to utilize a different style of shooting. So the X5S mount is usually what I use on this drone most regularly because it gives you the best battery life. I find that using the X5S mount, I get about 17 to 19 minutes sometimes 16 minutes or 15, the X7 mount is heavier. So that will add you know, weight to the drone, which will take away from the battery strength. That being said, the X7 mount will get you hands down the best quality by far, as well as the highest resolution abilities because it is a Super 35 sensor. Another key point about the X5S mount is that you can adapt many different Micro Four Thirds lenses to it that are uh, the automatic focus lenses from Olympus. The X7 mount, however, has DJI proprietary lenses for it. Now the price point of the DJI X7 mount with those lenses makes it a bit of an investment. They're not cheap. That's a lot of money to invest in a bird that's essentially almost eight years old. Now here's a superficial thing to this drone, but it looks professional. This drone looks like it means business and it looks like you know what you're doing because you know, there is a certain caveat being on sets that people see your rig or see gear and then they anticipate that they're going to get a good result, that they're going to get what they paid for. And there is a price point and a value to that. You want to look like you are as dedicated and professional to a project so that you're recommended for more projects and you're recommended that you know you know what you're doing and you have the tools that can get the job done for a host of different styles of shooting so when you roll up to set with a dji inspire 2 
you're taken seriously. Often you go with a team, you can dedicate a whole business to separately to the DJI Inspire 2 if you want to, because it is a platform that is recognized as an industry standard. So there's lots of about the DJI Inspire 2. And let's talk about those. Now, I find this drone is very awkward. It's heavy, it's time consuming, and it does take a long time to set up. It does take an extra bit of room to carry if you're transporting it overseas, and that's a whole other story right there. If you're looking to transport and shoot this in a different country, it does require you to you know, take an extra step to prepare this drone for work. The batteries are A, expensive, B, hard to find, and C, awful. They last for maybe about 12 to 17 minutes if you're lucky, if it's poor wind conditions, and if it's gonna be a bit of a rough day for filming, and also if you're filming with an X7 mount and the highest version possible for the uh, ProRes setting, you will burn through batteries, which means you have to have at least four to five sets of batteries, so that's 10 batteries. You also have to store them. And now these batteries right now are approximately seven to eight years old. Now, that's another thing to take into consideration. Seven to eight year old batteries will swell. They're dangerous, and they're something you don't really want to store because lithium batteries don't really stand the test of time very well, and they don't, they're not something you want to put in your house if they're old because they can be dangerous, but I digress. The batteries on this drone do make it an issue because you also have to pair them together and you have to set them properly. You can't just hot swap the different versions of batteries together because they do have to be paired. If they're not paired, the drone won't take off. And that being said too, you also have to check the battery status and temperature of the batteries because that can be another issue. You don't want the batteries to fail in flight. If one of these batteries go, this drone will fall out of the sky. You have to make sure that both batteries are equally charged, have the proper temperature settings, and this is antiquated technology. You don't want to waste time doing this stuff anymore. The next thing I don't like about this drone is that you have to utilize a dedicated SSD drive that looks like a long silver cigarette case and you can't find them anymore. If you don't get them with this drone, they are so stupidly expensive to find that it's not even worth the investment. 128 gigabytes that I found recently can run you as high as $400 specifically for this product because people just don't carry them anymore. Drone manufacturers across the country don't have them in stock and usually you find them on eBay where people just jack up the price. They're awkward, they're slow, and they also require a dedicated car reader for them specifically, which adds on more cost. This drone will never stay in place. It will always slightly go left and it'll always slightly dance right. It doesn't do what you want it to do and just stay in the air and not move. This thing, you pop it up and it, it just likes to kind of stretch its legs and wander. And there's no reason as to why it needs to do that. So that can be an issue if you're shooting in a very enclosed area or shooting in a space that might have obstacles. I love how DJI usually does a video and then they put the drone running through a, a warehouse that has beams everywhere or anything like a plastic sheet that makes it look all cool for the video. So you think this drone can obstacle avoid it and it won't drift. And that is just a blatant lie. This thing cannot do that. And I would never trust the obstacle avoidance in this drone particularly because that brings me to my next point, which is the horrible reception that this uses. So transmission on this is not the most recent version of OcuSync and it's not the most recent transmission series that come on the Inspire 3 and the Mavic 3 and all these drones. This uses older technology, which should just stay older technology and not be used in professional modern settings because you can't confirm or you can't rely on this transmission always working. It might just stop transmitting. If there's metal in the area, it might just stop even flying where you're trying to point it towards. This drone has issues. It's been known to have issues. Flying outdoors is better than flying indoors, but you don't want that with a drone that you're investing thousands of dollars into. You shouldn't have that with a drone you're investing thousands of dollars into. So that's a big sticking point with me is that you have to have a rock solid connection. The Mavic 3 goes in the air and it stays in the air and it does what it's supposed to do. You point it to go to the direction, it will go in that direction. This drone just, loves to go for a little little walk, you know? So that is something that is a key area when you're deciding to use a drone like this, that if you can't depend upon your signal and if you're in an area with a lot of interference and radio signals, I would not trust this drone to always give you 100% reliability. On that topic of transmission, it does use outdated technology such as USB cables that connect to older iPhones that don't have the most recent version of a lightning connector. It does use the Crystal Sky monitors, but those are expensive and hard to find too because they're proprietary to that time. 
So if you're looking to find one, usually you just hop to an iPad, but then the iPad you have to have is an older generation. You can't even use the most recent version of the iPhone properly with it because the app is the older DJI uh, Go 4 app. It's not the Fly app that DJI has now. So everything is older. And the interface in that DJI Go 4 app is just wretched because if you utilize this on a screen that's not a certain screen size, all the commands run into the same area. So if you're touching something, you physically can't change the thing on the drone because there's not an area to press. It will become an issue that you will run into and could slow you down and not get things up in the sky fast enough. I mean, all clients want fast results. They, they want you to start shooting and they want to get the results and they don't want to have technical errors. You don't want to lose confidence with your clients. So just use a pro product that works. You don't want to have something that's going to add extra stress to you, extra stress to your client, lose that sense of confidence that you've worked so hard to build as a videographer. So the million dollar question in 2023, should you buy, keep or sell a DJI Inspire 2? Now for myself, I'll be selling my DJI Inspire 3. Why I say that is I just don't fly it enough. So this drone does not go out every day. I don't often have my second shooter available every day to shoot. If I have to get a quick shot, I'll fly my Mavic 3. It gets a beautiful image, it's small, it's easy it's to use, it flies for longer, and it gets a beautiful result. For films and for any kind of TV work, I've found now as a member of IOTC 667 and part of the UAV guild operations for cinematographers, they often want to fly custom mounted rigs and that's like a Komodo or that is an Ari or a Canon or a Sony that's dedicated to its own custom aerial platform, not a DJI Inspire 2. So if you've enjoyed this walk down drone memory lane, please hit the like and subscribe button below and stay tuned for all sorts of videos I have coming up on gear reviews and tech reviews and editing techniques on how you can maximize your camera game to get the best result both on the ground and in the sky.